So now that we've seen how to combine and connect our resistors in series and in parallels, we can actually combine these series and parallel connections to make more varieties of circuits. We'll still keep our cases fairly simple for now, where we only have one single battery. And so that in all cases, we can reduce all our resistors down to one equivalent resistors and use Ohm's law, and then work all the way back. I'll take this step by step. First off, let's understand the question first. The wording, solve the following circuit. So to solve a circuit implies that we want to find all of the voltage and current for each resistor and sometimes the battery as well. And then from that, we can easily find the power because we have I and V. So what we're saying is every one of these components, R1 would have a certain current through it and a certain voltage across it. R2 would have the same thing and R3 would have the same thing. So basically we have six unknown to software. Well, technically there's also the voltage of the battery, which is given and the current of the battery, which we should figure out as well. So like I was saying, to tackle this, we would like to reduce this complex looking circuit all the way down to having one simple equivalent resistor. And sometimes this might be a multi-step process, such as in this case. So first off, you pick off a structure that is purely either series or parallel. You see, notice that there's a split here. So this group here is purely in parallel. So I can replace this with some kind of parallel resistance and then I'll redraw the circuit. R1 is still there, we didn't touch that. But we've replaced this other one with just a single RP, equivalent parallel resistance. And as we've seen, whenever we have parallel, we have to do this funny addition of reciprocal to combine them together. In this case, the two involved is R2 and R3, which are given to us. That's your six ohm plus one over 13 ohms. Again, that doesn't give us the equivalent resistance itself. It gives us the reciprocal. So we have to flip it back around. That's a three, by the way, sorry for the messy script. 4.1 ohms or so. And then the next step, we look, oh, hey, this is just, these two are just in series now. So I can replace this with a series resistance where I redraw and I'm finally down to a single resistor, which is great. So RS is equal to, in series, we simply add them together. R1 is one ohm. So there, now that we only have one single resistor or one single equivalent resistor, we can use Ohm's law whenever we only have one single component. And this is my series current. The voltage across the resistor is just the voltage of the battery. So we can work out this IS is V over RS. So that's 12 volts over 5.1053 ohms, giving us 2.3, 2.4 amps. This current would be the current of everything in this circuit. So we know IS is equal to that. And it also, also the current of the battery is the same thing. So we've got the V of the battery that's given, current of the battery, we've got VS and IS. And now from this little island of knowledge, we can go back up and expand back upwards until we're back to the very beginning that way we can solve for everything. So we reduce, reduce, reduce down to this simple looking thing. And then we expand it back out, translating 
things as we go. So to move one step back, we're going to split my RS back up into two things, which is my R1 and my RP. From here, we split things in series. And in series, because we only have one single path available, the current is the same. But then we're splitting the voltage. Because all the low electrons that come through this way has to keep going and has to keep going. We're not losing any charge. The current must be the same in the whole loop because there's no splits. The row doesn't split off. You must walk through everything. So that tells us that our I1 is equal to IP is equal to IS, which we already worked out. Then to get the V, we once again use Ohm's law. So V1 is equal to I1 times R1. And then VP is equal to IPRP. And you can double check that these two add up to 12 volts, which is the overall voltage that we're splitting, which is my Vs, right? So that's just a quick check, but that's how you get using the Ohm's law because we're just talking about one particular component. And then we take another step back, back to our original circuit. We're not gonna to touch our one anymore, but we're gonna split our P back into R2 and R3. And here, because the disconnection is parallel, anything connected in parallel would have the same V because literally you're taking the voltage across two of the same points. So they must have the same potential difference. So in that case, we're splitting the I because all the current that comes in gets split into two sides. Hopefully that makes sense. So that lets us say that V2 is equal to V3 is equal to VP. Bam! Got that number. Then likewise, to solve for each of the resistance, we have to use Ohm's law. I equals V over R. I equals V over R. Subbing things in. And you can check that these two currents actually add up to the original current that's coming across the equivalent parallel resistor. And so now we have successfully solved, quote unquote, the circuit by finding out all the voltage and currents. Let's summarize that in the table before moving on. So we have the battery, R1, R2, R3. If you look back, you'll find all these numbers. And again, we're keeping lots of digits because we're still having one more calculation before we get to the end, which is of course my P is equal to I times V in terms of watts. Multiplying, we get these numbers. And just as a quick check as well, you can see that the battery supplies a certain amount of power and when you add up the power used up by your resistor, it also adds to 28.2 watts because everything in the battery supply should be used up by the resistor. And just to summarize, whenever we are given a complicated circuit like the one we're given here, and we're told to solve for it, 
given all the resistance and the one battery, what we do is we simplify the circuit bit by bit, be it parallel or series, and reduce it slowly down to a very simple circuit with only one resistor left. And then we work backwards to expand it all back out using ideas like given in series, they should have the same current and split the voltage. Or when it's parallel, you have the same voltage, but you split the current. And then you can use Ohm's law to get the one you're missing. Relating everything, then we can actually solve for everything we need.